Time for the prestigious Build of the Day Award. We're now reaching a level of intelligence I'll never get to in game, or real life. T-Wolf was tired of falling from his vehicles, so he built a two-axis gimbal. Here's where it gets really crazy. No matter what the vehicle does, Link does not fall out of it. Cause you know, physics. Hi, my name is Dom and welcome back to Top Gaming Plays. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed today's video and submit your clips using the link in the description. But let's get into it. After one hour of playing TOTK. After 100 hours of playing TOTK. Some of these crazy Zonai builds have people calling this game Minecraft 2.0. Now, with this strategy by Honest Buy, we're verging on Monster Hunter territory. This is how you take down a Hinox in style. A close contender for build of the day was Ultra Baboon's tank with functional hatch. When the device is activated, the spring closes Link into the driver's pod. With Link now secured, he's free to terrorise Hyrule without the fear of getting hit. Behold, Hyrule's most feared war machine, the mighty Freedom Horse. An apocalyptic monstrosity serving truth and justice across the United States of Hyrule- Oh God. So it seems building Star Wars pod racers is the new trend, and I'm here for it. The other day we featured Meat Swipe's pod racer on the channel and it was pretty impressive. Now Nicholas Live has sent us his build, bonus points for the desert setting which really gives off Tatooine vibes. He's opted for a triple fan and two rocket combo for each of the engines and a wheel to get this thing off the ground. The base is a wing and steering stick combo which does mean eventually the wing will break but it does look cool. Screw building your house in Tarrytown. Build a mobile home instead. Disclaimer, Korok companion not included. <laughs> so did you know that you can fuse arrows with hoverstones? Once the fused arrow is fired, they'll deploy the hoverstone a short distance away. But that's not where it ends. First, fire a hoverstone directly above you. Now you can use Ascend to get to the new hoverstone, useful for getting height. Does this machine look dumb? Yes. Does it also do a surprising amount of damage? Yes. In case you missed that, look at the damage a couple of wax does on a Hinox.
One of the most popular modes of transport is the steering stick with two fans, otherwise known as the hover bike. We've covered that a bunch on this channel. If you fancy mixing things up and spending an extra two fans, the basket actually makes for an interesting base. The steering stick sits towards the front of the basket and four angled fans provide the propulsion. The top bit is even good for transporting Koroks around. T-Wolf's on a roll with vehicle designs and this one is powered by pure hatred and spite. What it lacks in movement, it makes up for in smashing enemies. Here it is punishing a Hinox. The Pooh podcast has built a car for exploring the depths. Turns out, the car wanted to explore the depths of his skull. Recall is the ultimate get out of jail free card, especially when it comes to wings. Boxy Boxy has designed what is, in my opinion, one of the best truck designs we've seen to date. And this couldn't have come at a better time, as I found better trucking music. Kobe. So I got a comment from Toy Wolf asking if we'd be down to show more Tarrytown player houses, and I'm ready to deliver. Van Hiz has created his own Skyview Tower right in the heart of Tarrytown. It was originally a few blocks higher, but the house reached the height limit. Oh, and Skyhorse. A wise man once said, work smart, not hard. This spinning water contraption uses hydrants to shower Muk to rock in water. Water transforms him from his deadly shark form into his weaker octopus form. Some war crimes are so horrific, you might want to grab a cheeky selfie so you can remember it later. It's not much, but it's honest work. <laughs> Keeping on with the farming theme, Eisdrak has built a tractor, although this harvest does not look very bountiful. The 
the spinning blade underneath the tractor actually does harvest the rice. If you're looking for an efficient way to do the paraglide dupe glitch, you can build a zone eye contraption like this. But an easier method is just to place a fan under a low piece of shelter like this. Uran 120 has built this death bike that moves towards enemies using homing carts at the base of the vehicle. Although, in retrospect, a stabilizer might have prevented Tulin from catching this stray. Zelda Switch 9 brought Pura to the sky, romantic as heck. Oh sure, I'll send you to the Great Fairy. Sage abilities in Tears of the Kingdom are clunky. Accidentally activating abilities is a constant problem and the game has a habit of waiting for the perfect opportunity. Hyrule Motors is proud to present the new Hyrule Explorer, built by the best Hyrule and Zonai engineers. It features four-wheel drive, ramming spikes, custom suspension, and an automatic laser turret. There's also a handy cargo bed with plenty of space for your Korok friends. Ever wondered what gloom hands looked like from the underneath? Nah, me neither. But GC Borg did the research anyway, and it's actually pretty terrifying. OP Sun created a solid attempt at a walker, and honestly this gives me so much hope for a functional ATAT. The machine is called Gunter by the way, and I think he suits it. So there's a really cool crystal formation in the Sternida Secret Hot Springs Cave. If you want to check this out for yourself, I've included the coordinates on screen below. You need to move this boulder out of the way using Ultra Hand, then crawl through the passage. So small spoiler alert, but this cave is actually linked to a quest line called Who Finds the Haven. The quest is given by Nat and Megan. Thanks so much for watching guys, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new and we'll see you tomorrow for another video.